Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start a discussion about multi-step income statements. I had promised to do this, and I'm going to do this tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about why you should even have a multi-step income statement. Well, when you're in retail and you're trying to sell merchandise, you're going to have things like sales revenue, okay? What you have is, hang on just a second, I'm <laughs> trying to get this going here. You're going to have sales, obviously you're going to sell merchandise, okay? But when you sell that merchandise, <coughs> usually you'll give a customer 30 days to return the merchandise back as long as they've kept their receipt. So that's why you have sales returns and allowances because some people are going to return your merchandise back. Let's say you're selling flashlights. Well, they buy the flashlight, there's a manufacturer's defect, the flashlight doesn't work so they bring it back to you. Well, you have to refund them the money. Or they could end up buying another flashlight. Hopefully you get them to buy another flashlight. If not, they return the merchandise to you, you're stuck with it, you have to give them back the money. Okay. But that's not all that's involved in selling. You also have cost of goods sold. You start off with your merchandise inventory and then you, of course you have to purchase merchandise to sell in your store. And then of course you're going to get discounts, okay? Remember you're not going to pay retail for the merchandise that you're going to turn around and sell. You're going to pay wholesale prices for it, then you'll turn around and sell it for a retail price, okay? That's how wholesale and retail actually work. Now, keep in mind that that merchandise, even though you bought it, sometimes has to come from a different location. Let's say you're buying merchandise. You're in Illinois. You set up a business in Illinois, but you're buying merchandise from Indiana. Well, they have to ship that merchandise from Indiana to your store in Illinois. Okay, let's say again with the flashlights. They manufacture the flashlights in Indiana, but then they have to ship it to Illinois. Well, that's a freight cost, okay? And whether they ship it by train or somehow uh, you're on the Illinois side of, let, let's say you're on the Illinois side of the Mississippi River and the flashlights are coming from the Missouri side of the Mississippi River, so the manufacturer just happens to be right on the Mississippi River so they can actually put uh, their freight on a boat and ship it to you uh, on a boat and you can pick it up and then bring it to your store. Well, of course, that's going to cost you. All right? And uh, they can do this by train, obviously not across the Mississippi River, but uh, let's say back in Indiana you were getting flashlights from them. They were shipping it by train from their location in Indiana all the way to your location in Illinois. Same type of deal. You're going to have those freight costs whether it be by truck, by train, by boat, maybe they fly it in. You never know. Okay? But that's an expense to you. And you have to list all these things. You have to show people who you are taking, uh, let, let's say, you are actually showing people um, who you're buying, who you're having ship your merchandise to you. Okay? And so your investors take a look at this and they're like, well, you know what? I think he's spending too much money. Or let's say you make this multi-step income statement for just your uh, your board of directors. So they're taking a look at this and like, man, that shipping cost is way too high. We can go with another company that's a little cheaper. They need to see that stuff like this so that they can make better financial decisions for your company. All right. Now, that's not all that's involved in, in the costs of doing business in the retail world. You also have selling expenses. Remember, you've got people on your sales floor selling your merchandise. So that's sales salaries. Then, of course, you're paying special commissions for merchandise. Let's say you got some merchandise on the dirt cheap, but you're encouraging your people to sell that merchandise so you can make a tremendous markup on it. Okay, you're going to pay them a little commission for that. That's that's an expense. Okay, um, you got people doing your uh, human resources. 
you got to pay their salaries. Uh, let's say you actually had to travel to X or Y company to look at their flashlights to see if they were worth enough for you to bring them into your store to sell them. That's a travel expense. Let's say you had to take the let's say you're trying to do a negotiation for these flashlights with this company so you take the manager of the flashlight company that's making the flashlights out to dinner that's an entertainment expense you have to advertise that you have these flashlights that's an advertising experience okay um, of course remember now you not only have to pay for the uh, freight to bring it in, but let's say you're selling the merchandise and you have to mail that particular flashlight to their house. So now you have to box it up, which means that you have to pay for boxes, you have to pay for tape, that strapping tape. See what I mean? It's just not as simple as it seems to make a simple income statement. You have to account for all of this. Uh, postage. Let's say you're having to ship this uh, flashlight that you just sold to a customer to their house. Well, you have to show that expense as well. Um, you got sales equipment. Let's say um, you have this strap, strapping tape dispenser. Okay, that's going to depreciate. Um, a conveyor belt may depreciate, so on and so forth. It's those kind of things. Boom. Um, you have to contact your customers, so you got a telephone expense, you got an internet expense. You have to account for all of that. And the reason why you account for all of this is that when your board of directors takes a look at this, they can say, okay, you're paying too much for postage, you're paying too much for this, you're paying too much for that. So they can show you a, a less expensive way for you to do business, which means more profits for not only your board of directors, but also for you. And then, of course, you have to pay for legal expenses. Let's say you're, you're going to get lawsuited because a flashlight uh, somehow hurt somebody. I can't imagine how a flashlight would hurt you, but say you're selling other things that can hurt people. Well, you've got to be protected from liability. That means you have liability insurance, so on and so forth. So as you can plainly see, it gets to be expensive. Uh, you have your utilities expense. You say you have water fountains in your in your uh, store. Well, that's it. That's a water expense. Uh, you have bathrooms. There's a bathroom expense. You got cleaning supplies. You have to use to clean the bathroom, so on and so forth. So it's stuff like this that's going to be on your multi-step income statement, and that's why you have a multi-step income statement. Alright, now I'm going to go into some more intricate detail about uh, multi-step income statements, but you're kind of getting an idea of why they even have those. And this will ultimately lead up to my discussion about FASB, chapter, FASB book number three. I know I started a discussion of that a long time ago, uh, but um, I'm going to finish it up at some point in the not so distant future. There you go, people. I thank you very much for watching this video. Now you have kind of an idea of how a multi-step income statement works, why they even have them, so on and so forth. Whew. I will tell you more in a future video. Stay tuned.